I'm going to build the table. As you know, right here, this is the dinette seating. We've got to get the cushions in, and they're much taller than normal. That's why these are so much shorter. Uh, it, they look a little different, but I'm going to show them to you. I'm trying to work some videos on it, and I'm kind of waiting on the upholsterer right now. But uh, we're going to build the table today. The dinette tape. Hey, if you're getting any kind of value out of any of my videos, would you mind hitting the like, subscribe, ring the bell? My favorite people know to leave a comment. Anyway, so what we have to do, I saved the old table and I'll show you it here in just a little bit. But the biggest measurement that we need is right here. Because it's going to sit down on this uh, one by right here. And so uh, at this end, we're about uh, 25 and a half, I guess. And right here, we're going to be about, about 25 and a half. So we know that we've got to go 25 wide because the table's going to sit right here. But it's got to drop down here for us to turn this into a bed. This will be a great big bed. Bed for tall guys. You'll love it. So anyway, we're going to go get the old uh, table, we're going to get the new width on it, and we're going to put it onto a new piece of three-quarter plywood, and we'll get going on that. Alright, this is my three-quarter ply. This is kind of like the uh, construction stuff. It's pretty heavy duty. You never know. There might be two people sleeping up front, there might be somebody big sleeping up front. Got the construction grade here, so it's going to hold up. So, what I have to do is I have to take this, the original table, original leg, you know we're going to reuse that, that's pretty cool. And I've got to take this to this. So this right here is going to be this. Now I gotta take this top off. I'm gonna bet that this is not any kind of uh, Formica or Wilson art. I'm gonna bet that it's probably a half inch piece of plywood and then a quarter inch piece of uh, that uh, Masonite board that's uh, got a little thing on the top of it. But we're gonna go back with three quarter and then we uh, got the Wilson art boomerang pattern that we like to use a lot, but it's gonna be in a light gray. So it's going to really not be too far off of the original. Jim liked the light gray versus the dark gray. It's, it, you know, it's the eternal uh, argument. It's the debate. I like it a little bit darker. He likes it a little bit lighter. Customer's right uh, this time. So I'm going to get this thing tore apart. Then we're going to make our pattern and start cutting this one. Got it tore apart. I like the leg. The leg's really in good shape. Just sand it down. Putty the holes. Amber shellac. Always. So we're good there. Happy about that. Uh, I think I'm even going to reuse the hardware. It's just a little, uh, little hinge. But it's original. Why not? Nobody will ever see it. It's part of the heart and soul of the trailer. Let's use it. And then this little doohickey right here, this little hook, I'll shine it up, and it kind of keeps the leg back up. When you, when you put it down to make a bed, this will hold the leg up onto the table so it's not making all that noise and everything. So, But hey, really not that much savings, but it's saving part of the trailer. That's what we're all about here, really. I mean, you know, doing our best. Um... We are going to be a touch wider. Because remember we said we were 25 and a half. This one is really about 24. So we got to go a little bit wider. I think that we're going to be able to reuse this. Because, I mean, it's in good shape. It's really in good shape. And this back piece here doesn't really matter. Except I may not be able to make that. Make this little 90 degree right here. That's a weird angle. May not be able to make this 90 degree. So we may have to use a new piece, but that's okay. That's okay. We can reuse this elsewhere. 
We'll see how it works out. But anyway, we got it off there. I wanted to show you that it was off there. Still in pretty good shape. Now, remember, I was talking about uh, this being masonite. Remember, we do all those Scotties, and, you know, we always tear it apart. And this, you know, you think it's Formica, and it's masonite. And I said, well, this is probably masonite. Guess what? It's Formica, probably, or something like that. I know that's a name brand. We like to use Wilson Art, sometimes Formica. But I'm going to say Formica knowing it's a name brand, and you know what I mean. So, hey, we can't reuse it, obviously. But man, did they, look at the, how they gooped that up. Look at this. Everywhere where you see black, they put some kind of tar or something on there to hold that on. I guess 54. It was a little bit different, so when we go to put ours back on, we're going to use a contact cement, and we'll go through it. We'll go through it. It's not going to look like that. I really wouldn't mind if I had that pattern still, though. That's pretty cool. So, the next step for me is I'm going to make this real close to the original, except that, remember, I've got to go over an inch and a half. So, I'm going to go ahead and real quick mark my now later i think this is the straight edge no it's not this this is this over here is the original so that that's factory so i'm going to go over here and i'm going to go to 25 and a half there i'm going to go up here to 25 and a half now i know that this edge to edge is going to sit between my dinette seating so we can make a bed. So, that stuff is nasty. Well, then I guess they didn't think we was ever gonna take it apart, so I guess it's our fault. So I'm gonna take this all the way out. Huh. I think I better make another mark real quick. I didn't do very good on that one. Let's bring this one down here a little bit. 25 and a half. All right, so 25 and a half on this edge. I'm gonna square it up at the bottom here. So I don't have to cut this. I don't have to cut this part. I don't have to cut this part. So I'm gonna square it up real good. Just a little double check. That's gonna be one and a half. That's one and a half. So I'm good there. Now what I have to do is draw this line. And I'm just really gonna draw the square right here. Maybe kind of hit this edge up here and know that this is the top. Because I can't really draw this to here because it's gonna be an inch and a half different on the angle out to here. But what I can do is mark right here where it stops. So we're straight right to here. All right, so what I need to do is find something that I can trace this with. And I don't know that I have anything that big, so I may have to get a string that is the proper, what do they call that? Not diameter, I think we want the radius for you math magicians out there. And put a screw in here start here and bring it around so it's going to be what's the radius it's going to be if that's 25 and a half that means that's 12 and a half 12 and three quarters so let me write that down because i can't do a lot of math 12 and three quarters i'll get that string i'll check that and i'll be right back and you can look at it i have got this marked out it wasn't as easy as i thought it was Pi R squared did not work on this rotation, but let me show it to you. I don't know, can you see that? I don't know, I'm doing, I'm doing bad camera work, but let's see. There, right there. That's going to be our radius. But the radius did not work for the Pi R squared, but that's okay. I kind of rounded it off and did the best I could. And uh, I'm going to cut it out real quick. And uh, 
Just let you kind of see that real quick. Hopefully Russ will put that on two times motion for you. And then we'll see how close we got. finished up here took the sander rounded that out you'll never notice where it got wonky if you see Jim camping nobody likes a rat no reason to say anything it looks fine all right let's make sure it fits all right let's get it in here oh yeah oh yeah like a glove like a glove, everybody's sleeping right here. Plenty good, plenty good. I like it, I like it. All right, now, we've got, uh, we left a little bit on each side uh, so that we can add our trim on this. But first thing we have to do, do a little light sanding, and uh, Curly's gonna help. We're gonna do a little light sanding on this, then we're going to put down some contact cement on both pieces and then router it out. Then we can put our trim on it. So we'll get started on that. Final thing that we have to do, trim this guy up. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'll get it started. And then uh, at some point we'll double time through it because you I think you've seen me do this before, but maybe you haven't. Maybe you're a new viewer. Good to see you. So this is our trim piece. This is aluminum trim. I got it from uh, Vintage Trailer Supply. They're not paying me, but that's who I use. So it's three quarter and uh, a little, little over three quarter. It's like 13 sixteenths or something, but that's okay because we've got to, we've got a three quarter inch board right here. If you remember, we cut that out and then we got our little bit of Wilson art on there. So I'm gonna start, I think I need to put a little, piece of wood under there real quick so I can make sure that I am flush. Now we'll set this right up here against the edge right here on the edge and this just has this little lip right here you can kind of see that little lip it's going to come up and cover any of the scratches that you did when you were using the router we've got some of those but that's okay and I'm going to use a little half inch screw right here so i'm going to start right on right here on the edge right like that get my screw gun going here just gives me a place to start right here now i can start going around and making some bends so i'm going to just go out here real quick and i'll fill these back in here in a minute i just want you to be able to see now i'm pushing down as i do this because I don't want a gap between the Formica, or Wilson Art, and our aluminum trim. Uh, put one in there. Now we're gonna come right to this edge. So I'm gonna have to put one here, pushing it down. Now, I'm gonna give it a little bend. I got my rubber mallet here, just in case it doesn't want to cooperate, but it seems like it does right there. So I'm going to hit this real quick on here, push, 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 push in, push down, give it a little, a little persuasion right there. And now all we have to do is kind of come around here like that. And then we're just going to 
screw these in as we go. And this will probably be a real good time to go really fast when Russ starts editing. So watch real quick. until I move my hand. Came up a little short. But we've got more. We're just gonna have to trim that out right there. We'll cut it real straight and sharp to match. But before I do that, I have got to, or I can do that now, but I'm gonna do this so that you can see it. We've got to attach this to the front wall. And we're gonna go, instead of using the big hinges, like you've seen us use in the past, we're gonna use this. And you've seen me use these too. This piece here would go up against the wall like that, and it would be mounted stationary. And then this has a little bump. You see this curve on there? That curve will fit into this gap right here. So it's gonna come in like this, sits in that, and then it closes tight like that. So when it's sitting here, the weight of the table is gonna press in to here. That's what holds it. And then the top obviously keeps it from coming out, but the weight will put the pressure up here where we have our bump out and it'll keep it pressed in here. And it just comes apart like that. So all I have to do on this is put it bump side up and we're not gonna really need any trim back here because we have this. I don't want to really just throw trim over the top of, you know, trim. That would be kind of anticlimactic. So let's see. We're going to go right here. We're real close. So let me get one in right. I think it would be for me to put this under here. I have room to work with. All right. One there, one right here, and I'll put the rest in. You don't have to watch me do that, but uh, that turns into, it looks like trim right here. So we don't need to put trim on top of trim. So this would just come in, of course the table would be flipped up and it'll just come in like that. And that's where it sits, right on that rail. So, the last thing I have to do is I'm going to sand down our table leg, shine it up, probably put some amber shellac on it, and we'll be done. Got the sander out, and I sanded off that table leg. If you remember from a few minutes ago what this looked like, it was terrible shape, but look at this wood. That wood grain is awesome. Look at that. That's some kind of, I don't know, cedar or even maybe redwood. I don't know. It's beautiful though. So I'm not gonna amber shellac it. I'm just gonna shellac it. Just regular shellac. Hard to believe, I know, but I'm gonna do it. Let's see what it looks like. I'll get my uh, handy dandy glove on. This shellac does not come off of your fingernails and I don't want people talking about me, you know. So, anyway, we're gonna kind of dip this in here. This is the backside. 
you can see where the hinge was. We gotta reinstall that hinge. So we'll kinda do this one first. That's a side that probably nobody's really gonna see. Give this a good, oh man, this wood is so thirsty. It is sucking up that, look at that already. You see that? Look at that. That is beautiful, beautiful. I think, I'm, I, think I made the right choice in not using amber on this one. I know you thought I was gonna say amber shellac and then your drinking game was gonna be on point, but not. We're just regular, regular here. Set this over here, give one good coat right here, because this would be the side that's out that most people will see, except for the person that puts this down. All right, make sure that I don't have any runs, no runs, no drips, no errors. Get that good. I don't even think that needs another coat. What do you think? You like that? Or should I have used Amber shellac. Leave me a comment. Should I have went with amber shellac versus clear shellac? I want to know your opinion. I know I'm right, but I am welcome to hear your opinion. Table is done. I want to show it to you. I'm real happy with how it turned out. I want you to see that boomerang pattern real nice. Let's see if we can get the glare off of it see that well, I'm sure you can because that's all you can see right now let me back it up a little bit so that boomerang pattern comes in a light gray and a dark gray this light gray is gonna really work well with uh, our flooring that Jim has chosen it's a gray kind of pattern so it's gonna look real nice I like the dark gray he likes the light gray Customer wants what the customer gets. So we did that. Now we uh, trimmed it all out. You saw that. But remember with that one spot, I had to add that piece. It's not bad. There's just gonna be a little crease right there, but it looks good. You're not gonna notice it unless you're looking for it. We got our hanger on the back so that we can put that up against the wall. Boom. Now, look at here. How beautiful did that turn out? I know you want to look closer, because I know you're going to leave me a comment and tell me I was wrong, but I don't think so. Look, I also kept the original hardware so that when we're done, and this is on the camper floor, we'll be able to put an eyelet right there, and we'll hook into that, and that'll keep this from moving and dropping down on us. Then when we're done, we just put it back right here or when we're, we're ready to put it into the bed position. And then this little guy right here, he's gonna hook on right here. And that way when it goes on the bed, it doesn't fall down. Innovative, I know, 1953 style. Hey, they knew what they were talking about. All right, just wanted you to see that. It's a great looking table. I'm real happy with it.